we are joined by former India captain, a World Cup winner in uh, Sunny Gavaskar. Sunny, bhai, first up, you know, as an integral part of the Indian cricket legacy, the one that I was referring to at the start of the program, how have you taken this loss personally? You know, I ask you this because you've played many a series at home, never had to endure a whitewash. Yes, there would have been series loss, but never a whitewash. This unblemished record bring broken now. How do you deal with it uh, as an important stakeholder uh, that ensured that this record was maintained while you were playing, while you were watching cricket? Look, every time the Indian team has won, uh, you know, it, it's a moment of great joy for all of us, all of us former players, all of us fans. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's, you know, every single time India wins uh, or some Indian players, one of Indian players, you know, do well, score hundreds, uh, uh, pick five wickets or bowl a beautiful delivery or take a terrific catch. It's a moment of great happiness for all of us because at the end of the day, we are all cricket fans. We love this game. We, we, we watch the game and we want to watch our favorites win. And our favorite, obviously, has always been the Indian team. So, yes, I think it has been uh, a little bit, uh, um, you know, hard to understand what went wrong with this team, which is, which in, in my view, is still a very, very good team. Uh, it, it, it's just hard to put, uh, you know, um, a finger on what actually uh, went wrong. Yes, that uh, that 46 all out possibly started it, but this team, this team still has the the talent, the temperament, the ability, you know, to bounce back. And they, I, we saw that in earlier in the year when England defeated us in the first Test match, and how the team bounced back to uh, win the uh, the next four Test matches. It just tells you that this team has that character, has that determination. So how things have, you know, unraveled this time around is something that that will take a long time to sink in. It's not easy uh, to, uh, at this stage, barely 24 hours after the game has, uh, the, the series has ended, mm. to come to, uh, come, uh, you know, to put get my head around it. I'll try and break it down uh, for you, Sahiba, and we'll try and deal with every uh, problem one by one. We have enough time on the broadcast to do that. But as you said previously, uh, you know, there used to be those comebacks. You, yes, you lost a match or two at home, but the Indian team would always bounce back. That is something that did not happen this time around, and which is why you've had to face this three-zip uh, versus New Zealand. Let me ask you, uh, because we're looking at Indian cricket history, Collectively, do you think this has been the worst batting display by an Indian team at home in, in, in memory that you can think of? Because it's not just one of failures that you spoke about, uh, you know, 46 all out, 250 odd all out chasing 350 in the next test match, 221 all out chasing 147. Collectively, the worst batting display at home? Uh, you, could, you could say that. You could say that because when you look back, there have been... Also, similar instances where teams India India's batting has collapsed, um, chasing not to not to big totals. Uh, but the way they played in the second innings at uh, Bengaluru, when they scored over 400 runs, certainly gave the feeling that look they had, they had overcome that speed bump of the first innings when they had been knocked down for uh, 46. And that is the reason why the subsequent four innings, uh, the two in Pune and the two in Mumbai, uh, it's hard to understand what went wrong. Uh, yes, the the, uh, the New Zealand bowlers bowled well. They they, are, they got the early breakthrough most of the time with the new ball, and then the spinners came uh, to the party. Uh, but uh, still, um, and the spinners, when you look at it, with the greatest of respect to to Santner and Ijaz Patel uh, and and Glenn Phillips, you would you would you would say that they are not the kind of bowlers who should be wrapping up this Indian batting lineup for as 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 easily as they did in 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 these four innings. That's an interesting point, anyway. As you talk about, you know, uh, Ajaz Patel and uh, Glenn Phillips, not the kind of bowlers. This Indian batting lineup has faced much tougher bowlers in the past as well. Uh, that takes me to another question uh, that a lot of former players have also raised. That if that is the case, why are we preparing these sort of... I mean, you can have spin-friendly tracks, but the kinds that we saw during your time, you know, you would have good batting pitches on day one, day two. By the time end of day three, day four, you would have some help for the spinners. Now, when you get tracks where the ball is gripping from day one, what you do is that even average overseas spinners get into the game, whereas you may have better spinners who can even pick wickets on good tracks. Why do then we serve such kind of pitches, many would ask? Well, I think that's got to be with the... With the, uh, with the uh 
thinking that to 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 win uh, and qualify for the WTC final that you need to win mm -hmm. and the, the the thinking in the change room would be that the only way we can win is uh, by preparing pitches which is which are going to turn from day one despite having by all accounts the best new ball bowler in the world in our team uh, just with Bumra he's the best new ball bowler in the world I mean just about every every cricketer uh, you know, everybody who follows the game of cricket uh, will, will say that he is the best new ball bowler in, in the game today. So we should be preparing pitches which will help him, actually. Then you have somebody like a Mohammad Siraj Akasti, who will also look good. Yes, the opposition have their own uh, top uh, frontline uh, new ball bowlers as well. But again, with, uh, with New Zealand's uh, bowling attack, with the greatest of respect, they're not uh, uh, the kind of bowling attack that, you know, Indian batters should be succumbing to, uh, you know, easily. Okay, because you talk about, you know, these decisions taken by, obviously this will be the management that will take the decision, what is the kind of pitches that we need, whether it's the WTC final that you're looking at. Uh, there were a lot of other tactical errors too. Uh, we, we heard Rohit Sharma also talk about it, whether it was the toss in Bengaluru, sending Mohamed Siraj as a night watchman, Sarfraz's batting position, changing from five to six to even eight at, at one occasion. Who would take the blame for it? Is this the captain then on whose shoulders all of this rest? Does the coach also play a role? Who's, who's to take the blame for all the tactical blunders that we saw? Well, I think every team has a, has a think tank, you know, so it is probably the captain, vice captain, the coach. Uh, uh, these, are the, these are the guys who take the decisions. Uh, they will also consult some of the senior players. That's how it goes. Uh, sometimes, you know, a captain takes a snap decision, you know, at the last moment he decides to maybe... Uh, promote somebody from you know, five to four. Uh, and uh, if it works out, it becomes a great uh, decision. If it doesn't work out, uh, it doesn't, uh, you know, I mean, it probably doesn't make any waves unless the team uh, loses. So I think uh, you have to say that this would be a decision that would have been taken by uh, by the think tank. Hmm. What have you made of uh, the, the short span that uh, Gautam Gambhir has been in charge of the Indian team as coach? Well, I mean, the results speak for themselves uh, because even in Sri Lanka, when we were in Sri Lanka, uh, it, you know, the, the, that's the first time I think we've lost in Sri Lanka in, in a limited overs uh, uh, competition for a long, long time. And now here, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a loss where we've, you know, it's a, it's a terrible loss. Uh, so I think the results uh, speak for themselves. Talking about results, Aimei, what, what did you make of the preparation of this Indian team uh, for this New Zealand series? Now, one thing that was pretty evident uh, to whoever watched this series is that the Indian players were struggling against spin. Uh, I want to know, should, should a lot of Indian players, especially the seniors, have played domestic cricket before this series started? Uh, mine, mine goes back to 1998. You know, Australia were coming here, Sachin Dindulkar said, no, I will play even the warm-up match. He played that game for Mumbai at the Brabon Stadium, gets a double hundred to prepare himself for the series. Uh, you had enough opportunities. There was a Dulip Trophy match that was shifted from Anandpur to Bangalore so that, you know, better hotels, better flight connections, senior players can play. Should players have turned up, prepared better for this series? Uh, well, that's the reason Sachin Tendulkar was Sachin Tendulkar, wasn't it? Uh -huh. Because you know he he was so fiercely proud of what uh, uh, he, he what he he could do and what he wanted to do for the team, and that's exactly uh, what it was. Not just don't don't forget uh, that 200 at the Brabant Stadium, uh, you know the Ranji Champions Mumbai versus the visiting team Australia. Uh, so he did that. Then when he went to Chennai, he asked Lakshman Shivram Krishnan, a lovely leg spin bowler, to come and bowl round the wicket, created a rough around that area so that he could practice that slot sweep and the inside-out shot against Shane Warne. So, so that is the kind of preparation, which is why Sachin Tendulkar has got almost 16,000 runs in test cricket and 100 international centuries. So, so I think that is the kind of preparation that everybody needs to do. If you don't do it, and particularly when you are getting into what you are call, calling the at the lower end of your uh, career, mm. then with with the gaps that are there, there will always be that little body speed and bat speed situation, which takes a long time to, to get back. Mm. 
So it is not just in cricket, it is in any sport. You look at tennis, those who are in their 30s and then they suddenly take a break. If it's an injury break, it's, it's even worse. But if it's not an injury break, it's just, you know, to refresh themselves when they come back. It's very, very difficult to win tournaments after that. They will get to the quarters and semis. You look at the Bobs, you look at the McEnroe's who took all these breaks, uh, the corners. They, when they took the break and they came back, they were never the same players again because the game had moved on just that little bit, you know, for even their class to cope up with. And I think that is something that might not have helped. But mm. let's not look only at, only at that. Let's look at all the players who played in the Tulip Trophy. They also were not able to do it. So it's not a question of just looking at, you know, the, the players who did not play the Tulip Trophy. Mm. But the others who played in the Tulip Trophy, what did they do? They were young, they, were, they had all the reflexes, they had everything going for them, but they did not because there is now this whole thing about looking to play in a particular manner. We only want, there is a one solution to all, you know, one solution of thought to all the pro batting problems and which is to go bang, bang, bang. There is no question of trying to wear out the bowler. There's no question of tiring out the bowler. There's no question of watching uh, waiting for the ball to get a little bit old if you're if you're uh, playing against a new ball, tiring out the bowler, waiting for the pitch to you know uh, to to uh, to become a little bit easier to bat on. It's almost as if oh my number is going to be on this ball, so let me go before that. Let me go bang bang. Hmm. That is what is really the issue. It's not a technique problem. It's a temperament problem. And in my view, I've always said it. It's a temperament that separates the men from the boys. That's interesting, Saima, and I'll spend some time talking about that, that why is it that even those that are playing uh, domestic cricket still not being able to play against spinners on spin-friendly tracks? I'll get to that, but before that, since you were talking about that, you know, if the end is nigh, uh, especially for players uh, that may be aging, uh, you will start to have problems when you take a break. It takes a lot of effort to be in tune with the game at the pace that it's moving. So, straight up, my direct question, is the clock ticking for Rohit Sharma, Virat Kohli in Test Match Cricket? For everybody. Hmm. It's not just them. Hmm. But because they're in their 30s, mid-30s, so it is probably a, a little bit tougher for them than, than the guys who are in their early 20s or nearing, nearing the 30. Hmm. So it is not, it, the, top, the clock is ticking for uh, for everybody and uh, and which is the reason the more you're in rhythm the more you're playing the better your chances of being able to keep in uh, keep in pace with the demands of uh, modern cricket uh, Saiwai, the reason I, I specifically asked about the two of these players because overall runs did not come in the six innings i mean if we look at some young players yashashwi got runs in different test matches Shubman Gill has got runs. Sharfra has also got a 150 in one of the games. Rishabh Pant has been outstanding. So if you go through that batting order, you've had players perform at some occasion or the other. It's the two stalwarts that have really not been able to turn on their game in this entire series, which is why probably a bit more discussion on them than the others. Yeah, totally understandable with that because, you know, look, they've been, this is, this is one of those rare series hmm. where both have not been able to, to score the runs. Kohli, don't forget, got a 70 in the, in the second innings at Bangalore. So it, 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 is, it is just one of those rarities where both these stalwarts have not been able to make their usual contributions. Mm. And something like this is, is, look, a bad patch comes to everybody. Sometimes, you know, you get a couple of bad patches in your career. That's, that's again, uh, you know, what, uh, you know, sporting life is all about. But how you come back from those bad patches have been, have been something, you know, which actually tells how good a player you are, what is the kind of character you have as a, as a sports person. And so that is going to be what, what we are going to see in Australia is really going to, uh, you know, going to be uh, interesting because, you know, that will actually tell us where the future of Indian cricket lies. Uh, you know, uh, this is, uh, again, a hypothetical question. If things don't turn out the way that they, uh, you know, we're expecting them to in the Border Gavaskar Trophy for, for Rohit and Virat, do you think then serious uh, questions will be asked of their future in Test cricket? Oh, definitely, yes. They okay. don't score runs in, in, in Australia. There will be um, a clamour for, for a, a new-look Indian team to start from, uh, from the tour of England. 
Okay. <clears throat> Saima, what did you make of, in general, uh, the decision to announce the team for Border Gavaskar series while the New Zealand series was on? Uh, you know, many believe you could have looked at the form of players in the remaining test match as well. Plus, there was an A team that was storing there, maybe looked at a few youngsters there. Or were you fine with the team selection uh, right after the second test match? I don't think that uh, there would have been too many changes. Uh, so, I don't think, you know, announcing the team earlier was, uh, was an issue at all. I don't think that was it. No, I don't think there would have been any uh, any other players from outside who have not, who have not been selected who would have made, made a case for them to be included. Uh, you've already seen Abhiman Yishwaran who was batting so well. We've got four, four hundreds or five hundreds, back-to-back hundreds. He's in the test team. He's, he's, he's in Australia. So, yes, I, I think uh, the selection committee actually knew who, who from the outside were putting pressure to be in the team and they have included them. So, I don't think it made a difference. And finally, uh, Sai Bhai, uh, the World Test Championship, you know, you've had two finals so far. India has played both those finals. Now the equation is pretty clear. India have to win 4-0 in Australia. Can't afford to lose a single test match. Do you still have hope? No, I don't. I, absolutely. In, India cannot beat Australia 4-0 in the, in the test series. I'd be very, very, I'd be over the moon mm. if they do that. I would be over the moon if they do that. But 4-0... India can win 3, 3-1, three, 4-0. Zero. Is, don't talk about the World Test uh, Championship final now. Just focus on with trying to win the series in Australia. Never mind whether you win 1-0, 2-0, 3-0, 3-1, 2-1. Win win because that is how all, all of us Indian cricket fans are going to be back to feeling good again. And finally, Sainway, before I let you go... If I could ask you, you know, you spoke about the issues with the Indian batsmen. One is the temperament. One we've seen, you know, uh, so good against spin bowling. What do you think can be done to going back into that phase where India were definitely, or the Indian batters were definitely the best players against spin bowling? Because that hasn't happened in the last few years. Well, what I would suggest is maybe just uh, look at playing the situation. Don't go in with a preconceived plan. You've got to look at the bowling, you've got to look at the pitch, you've got to look at the situation and play accordingly. When you go in with a preconceived plan, if the ball is not in the area where you're looking at, you're in trouble. And that's why the Indian bat batters who look to go the aggressive way were in trouble in this series. Okay, so uh, I mean it's clear what Mr. Gavaskar feels is the core issue with Indian batting. It's the temperament and not so much the technique that's troubling them. You change the temperament, maybe uh, things will definitely fall into place. But Sai Gavaskar, thank you so much for taking our time speaking to India today on that 3-0 whitewash that New Zealand have inflicted on the Indian team.